Hi, I'm Jason Hearn uh, for Audio Technology Magazine and today we're going to have a quick overview of Korg's latest new polyphonic analog synth, the Minilog. Uh, the Minilog is a dual VCO analog synthesizer with four voices. Uh, it features uh, three different waveforms for each of the VCOs, wave shaping, pitch adjustment, um, ring and sync modulation and oscillator cross modulation has a mixer section which mixes the two VCOs together and brings into play a noise oscillator and then that feeds into the filter section. The filter section is a very simple low pass filter with either four pole or two pole operation um, and resonance and can be modulated by envelopes, keyboard tracking and velocity. Next up we have the modulation section which features two envelope generators, an amp envelope and a filter envelope and also a single LFO, which can be clocked to incoming MIDI clock. Uh, the, env the LFO has three different wave shapes and can actually reach audio rate modulation, which is really cool for creating more sci science fiction, I guess, style sound effects. We have uh, the oscillator, uh, so the oscilloscope display, which is a high resolution OLED display and is really quite a visual treat and an educational uh, tool for learning how the synthesis engine works and also for examining what's actually going on under the hood. Let's make a voice from scratch. So first of all, let's uh, pick a, a voice assign mode. I'm quite a fan of unison mode, being uh, as uh, it sounds really fat and delicious. So we'll just get it set up. Now, first of all, we'll turn down the other sources in the VCO section and just have the first VCO going. So here we have uh, tr sawtooth, triangle and pulse. So next to that we have a shape function which allows you to modulate and do different things to the different wave shapes which greatly expands the capabilities of what the oscillators can do. So for example, let's pick sawtooth mode Now, as, you, as I'm tweaking the synth, you can see that the uh, oscilloscope display is uh, graciously showing us exactly what's going on under the hood. This is incredibly useful for newcomers to sound design, and as you can see, it's incredibly responsive and shows you a lot of what's actually going on under the hood. Let's pick the triangle wave now. So as you can hear, additional harmonics are being introduced to the sound. Pulse wave. So basically good old pulse width modulation. And the beauty of that is that you can modulate the shape of the um, pulse width modulation with the LFO. So let's make a bass patch. I'm going to pick unison mode because unison mode lends itself well to making basses. And we'll turn off the second VCO and noise. So all you can hear is VCO1. So uh, what I'll do is I'll adjust the uh, wave shape so that it's a pulse wave and then change to the wave shape. I'll introduce a bit of modulation onto the VCO, uh, onto the wave shape by selecting shape here, having a low rate, picking a triangle wave for the LFO and turning off uh, any kind of modulation from the envelopes. We'll start with a very slow rate. So as you can hear, it's doing classic pulse width modulation. Let's introduce the second VCO and see what we come up with now. Excellent, it's getting fatter and fatter. Let's uh, make sure that's on pulse wave as well. And we'll change the starting waveform position. So a bass wouldn't be a bass without some decent uh, filtering applied to it. So we'll turn the filter into a four pole mode and we'll sweep the cutoff down and have a listen to what we get. So adjusting the envelope generator intensity on the patch, 
Uh, it's a bipolar control, incidentally, so negative. Uh, when you go less than um, 12 o'clock, uh, basically does negative modulation. So perhaps those dubstep heads out there would appreciate the kind of wobbles you'll be able to get with this. And then for more kind of plucky basses, you can have positive um, envelope modulation. I tend to find you get bigger basses with less resonance. So next up, let's uh, add some more modulation with the envelopes. And let's introduce a bit more detuning on the unison. Just a little. If you're in here right now, you'd probably hear that my warehouse is shaking with the bass. Make no mistake, it's analog. It, this will do good bass. Uh, it'll do great pads, searing leads, and it'll deliver a lot of the sonic textures that I still find software synthesizers are challenged to reproduce. Anyhow, now I've got this wonderful bass. Let's do some uh, step sequencing with it. So on my door, I'm gonna feed uh, some clock to Minilog. Just mute the other tracks. And we'll have a bit of a play here. So we've got Ableton running here and I've uh, basically got one of Dave Lackey's SyncGen boxes feeding dead accurate clock to it. So it's a good, good way to see how well Minilog will respond to a good clock source. <coughs> so we've got machine doing drums. So you can be playing with Minilog just like so. And as soon as you feel ready to just jump in and step sequence, you just hit the step sequence for record button and play in a one bar riff, like so. Let's say you don't like what you've done. It's really easy. Just blow it away by pressing shift and reset. Shift and, oh, shift and rest. <laughs> uh, so now I'll play back again. We'll see that pattern's gone. One of the unique aspects of Minilog is that it has a motion sequence function. Up to four parameters on the front panel can be motion sequenced, and it's available to every parameter that's on the front panel that has a dedicated control for it, even the switches. So the way I like to think of these motion sequences is actually like having extra envelopes. So although there's only two envelopes on Minilog, you can press these motion sequence tracks into being additional envelopes. So it's actually like having six envelopes that have 16 stages that are clocked to MIDI clock. That's very useful. Let's have a look. So 